Howdy folks. So for today's random teardown, I have this Honeywell programmable thermostat. This is from uh, the landlord of one of uh, the houses I used to live in. Um, he removed it because he said it stopped working. So uh, I thought uh, it looked to be in good shape, so I, uh, I just took it from him. And uh, I never ended up installing it in my current house. I have a different thermostat. But uh, I kept it. So this is the uh, RTH230B, and I just thought I'd uh, take it apart and see how they're, uh, how they're doing this, maybe what kind of processor this is running, if it's a custom chip, um, just take a look inside. So front cover, just got some instructions, it's boring, proper operation before moving the batteries, so there's probably batteries under here. Okay, so it uses uh, two double A's, it looks. Let me see, do I have any of those? Ah, yes I do. Okay, so uh, let's see what it does. Wow, they really snap in there. Getting these out is gonna be a bitch. Why, why is that so tight? Yeah, see they've got these, these little plastic uh, little like notches and they really hold the batteries in there damn okay so it said 2.6 on the screen and now there's a battery indicator flashing now it's full so it makes me think it's probably just telling us it's on batteries because obviously this is supposed to run off the uh, the AC transformer for the uh, the furnace and we've got uh, times not set I, I've never used this, so I don't exactly know how it works. So you can set the clock, go through the program. Hmm. I don't think it's going to do anything because uh, it probably relies on the external power probably to run the relays and things like that. It probably just uses this to maintain the program and the clock. Because of course, if, if you don't have power, then uh, it doesn't really matter, right? Your furnace isn't gonna work. I'm kind of uh, appalled by how bad the viewing angle on this is. Uh, you basically have to look at it from about this angle. Uh, you probably can't see that, but that's where your contrast is. As soon as you look at it straight on, the contrast is pretty bad and just below it's basically gone. So this is obviously designed to be mounted low on a wall where you're looking down at it. Not even not even eye level, which I think is kind of strange, but because uh, I mean, the thermostat I have is, at, is, is, is actually at eye level. It's quite high up, which is uh, unusual. So anyway, I just imagine I'm gonna need a screwdriver to get these batteries out. <clears throat> yeah, that's that's not easy. I know these are fully these are fully charged, so it's not the not the battery level. Okay, so the back. Um, how does this come off? I'm probably going to have to undo this screw here, if I remember correctly. There we go. Okay, so the back is uh, basically we just have this terminal strip. And I see our first signs of an issue. There's a pin that's stuck inside the uh, the heating red wire connection, and that's probably supposed to be attached to that header there. So that may be part of our problem. So we've got a, a date on the plastics here. Twelfth uh, week, no, uh, December December 2010. Assembled in Mexico. Is this a is this a date? Uh, twenty eleven week twelve day two. So yeah, that could be uh, that makes sense actually, right? Plastics are made a little bit before unit was assembled. That that might be a weird way of doing a date code. Okay, so this obviously just screws to the wall, and then you clip the device onto that. So here is the back. PCBs exposed. So you can see we've got this anti-theft 
um, strip that's actually, they've actually embedded it into the product, not, not the packaging, which is kind of interesting. You don't see that too often, but I mean, for a thermostat, who cares, right? Uh, let's see what we have. So obviously this is our terminal strip. Uh, or, ooh, that's loose. I can actually pull that. This side, this end moves up and down a little bit. This side seems to be anchored, but this side doesn't, and then the missing pin is right on the end here. So this might be why it doesn't work, because uh, obviously all the joints on this side are probably broken. And of course, if you can't get power to the device, yeah, that's bad. I'm not going to move that anymore. I'm gonna, when I take this board out, I'm going to see how bad it is, because they're obviously connected to the other side. So we've got a jumper here between HE and HG. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what this means. Uh, could that be gas and electric for heating? Is that that might that might be it? I I, I don't know. Um, so we have a relay here, Omron three volts DC coil. We have two caps, both made by Rubicon, so not terrible. We have a PCB date here of 03 2010. So. Uh, yeah, that, that makes sense. So this was obviously designed, this was made probably the, the year after, almost exactly a year after it, the board was designed. So there's this blob of hot glue here. It says TH, and it's got two wires, and that looks all the world like the, uh, the thermistor, or thermocouple, or whatever this device is using. And it's just sort of tucked up in the corner there. So the actual thermal sensor is just in in the plastic here, there's no vents to let air through, which I find uh, kind of interesting, because most of the other thermosets I have have some sort of ventilation around the area that has uh, has that in it for more rapid readings, but I guess maybe they want to smooth out, so uh, smooth it out so basically rapid temperature changes, like a gust of cold air isn't going to change this too quickly. So that might, uh, that might explain it. So we've obviously got our multi, got our two switches in here, one one block, so there's one for the heating and cooling, one for the fan. Okay, the back is pretty boring, so let's open this up. I've uh, I've ordered an electric screwdriver, so it should arrive within the next week or so. So uh, I'll be doing a review on that to see how. Uh, how fast it is at removing these little tiny screws. It's supposed to be for small screws as well as big ones. So these battery terminals are soldered straight onto the board so I'm assuming that I can just lift this board straight out. However that uh, that glue that holds the uh, thermal sensor down is uh, sort of holding it in. Okay. So on the inside here, we've just got the uh, switches and some simple membrane uh, buttons. Looks like it's yellow on the uh, the head of that. And then we've got our board here. So we've got uh, more buttons over the contacts there. Yeah. Ooh, this looks... Wow. I don't know if you can see this, but these are the... Uh, these are the pins on the back. And they come up right here under the display. And this pin, the one that's missing, has pulled clean out. There's a, a hole right there. There's a hole right there where it's completely gone and the one next to it doesn't look like it's got any solder at all. It's like barely there at all. And these these two also, this one has barely any solder. So this, this just looks like a case of bad soldering. Um, like they almost look like they're dry joints. So, yeah, that may have just 
yeah, that's that's actually kind of surprising. I mean, it probably took a lot of force to pull that connector out, but yeah, the solder joints on that do not look very good, and that that should be relatively easy to uh, to fix. So uh, I think I can get this thing working again if that, because that's that's almost certainly the problem, because uh, if it can't connect to uh, to the HVAC loom, then of course it's uh, not going to work. So I can't see anything other than some. Uh, discrete stuff over here so almost certainly the main processor is under the display here we've got the two zebra strips on each side so I want to try and remove this without destroying it which may or may not be easy well, let's try and leverage up a little bit okay they were stuck down a little bit Oh, that's cool. You saw the uh, digits come on there. Okay, so they've got a little frame underneath, which is nice. Nice touch. So here's the crystal that's poking through the board. So they've obviously done that to get the clearance inside of here because obviously you've only got that much height, right? The amount of height between the bottom of the panel and the zebra stripe. So they've obviously had to punch that through the board to get the clearance they need. Because I was wondering why, just looking at the backside, why this was like that. So we have a single chip here. And this is a magnifying glass. This is a Texas Instruments OCA 8GRWG4 M430F413. So that would be an MSP430, I'm guessing. So that would be a uh, ultra low power 16 bit microcontroller, I'm gonna guess, just by the part number. And that's no, that's no surprise. Um, they're quite powerful. They've Got very good power management, so uh, not surprising. I mean, it was it's 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 almost certainly going to be a micro given what this is. I mean, it need, it's got built-in squared prom, um, flash memory for the program. It's possible that that number two point six that appeared on the screen when I turned it on was the firmware version. It's very possible because um, I don't really know what else that would be for. Because it definitely wasn't a temperature. Um, so yeah, it, this was either going to be an MSP four thirty. Uh, a PIC micro, maybe an Atwell, Atmel AVR, something like that, uh, or maybe like an ST part or some more obscure micro, but uh, that that's not terribly surprising. And you can see that this thing is driving the LCD directly, uh, which is kind of kind of a, a neat way that they're doing it. So rather than having uh, a dedicated display controller chip, they've just utilized the fact that this particular package has so many pins. Um, they've just used all the GPIOs to drive the LCD directly, which uh, reduces the cost quite substantially. So yeah, I think I'm going to solder up these uh, these connectors and uh, get it back to working order. I guess I'll keep it as a, a backup in case my, uh, my thermostat decides to uh, die on me. Does that say... No, I thought that said program for the the program, but it, it looks like a C because uh, they might be doing uh, in circuit programming on this because you can see that there's a lot of test points around here. So obviously this is put on a bed of nails, and it's either programmed or just tested or both. Okay. Well, I mean it's very very simple, but that's sort of what's expected. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you found, uh, found that kind of interesting. Thanks for watching.